Welcome to this gathering of the elders, Conversation One, hosted and organized by UCT's Works of Art Committee and our amazing team um, who have been working tirelessly behind the scene to get us here. Thank you for tuning in. Um, we have a very special and uh, amazing group of um, speakers this evening. The life of George Hallett, um, as remembered by Lefifi Tladi and Eugene Skiff, who I've had the honor to meet this week, uh, as you will see this evening, is a kind of reminder about the life-affirming power of art and creativity. These are stories um, and George Hallett's life and both the lives of, the, of these two people um, are really, uh, once again, gives one a sense of stories and lessons that are complex and powerful that we are yet to learn and circulate inside South Africa. I myself am a student of South Africa's cultural history. I'm no expert of, on George Hallett, and I'm very thrilled to see such an incredible list of people who've tuned in today to participate in this, because I think um, there are many of you who knew him and knew his work and uh, knew him very well. And I'm looking forward to getting to the point where we can hear from you and also engage with our two speakers. Um, just a, a, a little announcement. Please, um, the suggestion is that you switch to speaker view. And just a reminder, please to do interact with us and send your questions using the chat option. And uh, we'll have a, a round of questions at some point in the proceedings. So I'm going to invite Eugene Skiff to kick us off by just showing us uh, some of some really powerful pictures of um, his recollections and memories of, of George Hallett. Eugene, good evening and welcome. Good evening, Belmont. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for welcoming me and for allowing me to grace this beautiful space that we uh, have ably created to kind of indulge in the memory of the beautiful spirit of our brother, George Hallett. Um, I should start off, first of all, by uh, apologizing to our participants who uh, I've seen a list of them in the waiting room. And already I recognize uh, uh, several reputable names uh, of people who were very, very close, as were we, as were Lefifi and myself, to George. Uh, we apologize because we, 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 we have been and continue slightly to be having uh, technical problems, including uh, an aspect of load shedding. So I hope this doesn't topple our, our, our you know, beautiful event. But it, it makes me wish that we were in one physical space you know where we could actually touch and embrace and feel each other as we remember our beautiful brother so in some ways we, we uh, our spirits actually transcend the virtual space that zoom is and we make it more real than even itself imagines itself to be um whilst we wait for our brother lefifi tladi who's having technical problems in stockholm in sweden I, I, I would like to share with you these six iconic images uh, of George's that we have chosen. And I, I, I will speak to each one of them uh, uh, very briefly. If, if we can see those, uh, the, 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 the first one, Valmont, would be the, the, the one, you know, one of the most memorable uh, exile photos ever taken by any photographer but this time by George Hallett of, of, of a group of us in um, King Street in Covent Garden in London. I think it was taken in 1982 or three, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I'll get, I'm, I'm get just trying out? to get it. To, we'll get it to you now. Yes. Whilst, whilst you're getting that up, uh, I will just say very openly right at the start that um, I, uh, amongst the beautiful, as I say, reputable names I saw in the waiting room uh, are the names of two very, very close friends of mine, 
and comrades who I haven't seen for some years now, uh, uh, Lorna and Graeme de Schmidt. I see that they are here as well. Uh, we welcome you, my sister and brother. And there are many others as well. I think Rashid Lombard is there and some other names. But uh, uh, for a start, I'd like to say that um, George, we spent a lot of time together with George in London during our exile days in, 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 the, in the 80s, especially the early 80s. And uh, uh, many a time there would be when we are either at Lorna's place or my place and uh, 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 discussing, you know, sharing stories about our political activism in South Africa. And always it would be with music and food and drink. And I remember uh, uh, Lorna and, uh, uh, and George inspiring me to learn to cook my first chicken, like Capetonian chicken curry, if you like, you know, yeah. Oh yeah, here's the picture. So, uh, thanks for that. Let me just, I just need to get uh, one second. Bear with me a bit, yeah. So, so in, in this picture, um, this photo is from around 1982, as I was saying, it shows a group of London-based South African exiles coming from a meeting to form Pizzo at the Africa Center on King Street and Covent Garden in London. Pizzo was a broadly based non-sectarian supra-political cultural movement of South African artists who realize their great need to reinterpret themselves to the world and to arrest the further erosion of the people's culture by the alien dominant culture of the oppressor. In the picture from left to right in the front row is uh, Moichupari, Vincent Sakwai, Mpumi, whose surname I forget, and her daughter, uh, Maroro, Glenn Uchebe, Masogwane, Mpiwa Yengwa, myself, Justice Mabena, Nandipa, Matigiza, Lionel Ngakane, the filmmaker, and then the actor, poet, and, and filmmaker as well, John Machigiza, and Mbulelo Zamani. In the back row is Cosmo Peterse, Greg Botolo, and Piti Gantuli. Some of these artists are no longer with us. Um, could you show me the, the next image, please? The, the next one down. Ah, oh, lovely. So this, uh, th this, this one now is uh, a powerful image of Chief Daweti, and it speaks of the warrior spirit that an uprooted soul carries with him or her wherever they may be taken. Chief left South Africa with the dance company Ipitombi, which was a bastardization of the, of the Zulu question, E.P. Indombi, which translates as, where is the virgin or grown up girl? This photo was taken in 1983 at Oval House Music School, where I was director. Chief was one of the dancers in my group, Metaphor Rhythms, which performed, uh, he performed in my multimedia production called Masibambisane, Zulu for Unity. Next one, please. Velmont, could I see the next image? Ah, oh, lovely, that's right, thank you. Um, I'm sure a lot of people recognize this brother. This is uh, uh, Pitiga Ntuli and uh, He's holding one of his sculptures. Pitiga used to uh, recycle, used to visit junkyards a lot and scrapyards and uh, 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 th that kind of thing and pick up any used object and transform it into a sculpture. In this, in this case, he's holding um, uh, a gearbox, I think. And it's, uh, 
he's he's carrying it on his shoulder, if you like, almost to uh, to, to give a sense of the arduousness of the struggle. But his his vision looks out to the future because he's done is determined that freedom will come, and and and. George actually organized, arranged, uh, I, I was present when this photograph was taken and George arranged uh, the, the, the image of Pitiga to be in the way that uh, 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 he envisioned. Next one, please. Thank you. So this is uh, uh, a, a picture of Robert Sitole playing his penny whistle in that iconic South African township style made famous by Spokes Mashiani. And it, 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 this picture for me encapsulates the blues of exile. Not all of us dealt easily with being uprooted from the familiarity of our homeland. George could see this and he warmly communicated its soul in the music of his photography. Next one. We move to the next one, please, uh, Valmont. I think it's James Matthews, is it? Oh yeah, Alex Al 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 Duma and his son. That's a beautiful one as well. The, the beautiful, uh, to me, this uh, speaks of the intimacy and tenderness of unpretentious love immortalized in, 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 in a photograph in a way that George was known to be able to do. And then I think we've got James Matthews, have we? Yep. Uh, thank you, that's James Matthews. These, these are my personal interpretations, if you like. And I, I was waiting for Lefifi, but I believe Lefifi has arrived. So I'll hand over to him in a minute. But this photo of James Matthews draws us into the depths of the genius and fearlessness of the legendary people's poet. We can see the shimmer of his courage with which he faced the brutality of the evil racist apartheid regime. We can also see the spirit of his certainty that love will reign supreme through the poetry of liberation. Um, thanks for that, uh, Valmont. We, we can remove the, the, the images now if you like. Um, and I see that Lefifi is here, but just before Lefifi uh, uh, comes in, could I just say uh, uh, philosophically for me that um, George Hallett's love led him directly into people's hearts. This made his camera lens both the perspicacious eye and lance that extended his penetration into the soul of his subject. In this way, he was able to resonate with their deeper humanity. George saw people as situational shapes of spirit, as far as I'm concerned. His eye eternalized these moments without imposing an outside agenda. And the final image affirmed this everlasting resonance. Thank you for now. Thank you, Eugene. Um, and welcome, Lefifi. Good evening. Do you need a moment to catch your breath or? Chamza, what's up? It's interesting what you are saying, um, Eugene, and uh, I, I was just struck by there's a very informative um, interview that uh, the photographer and historian John Mason produced. Um, I wondered if it's maybe a, appropriate to, uh, well, I'll get to it in a, in, a, in a minute or two. I wanted um, to give Lefifi a chance to just speak. Um, but if he's, if he's having, still having difficulties, maybe we can carry on. Lefifi, are you there? Can you hear us? No. Okay. It looks like he can't hear us. He's, he's touching his ear. Yeah.
Can you hear us, Rafifi? Let me see. Okay. In, so in one of the quotes, um, George speaks about his early years, which I guess is sort of a prefigure some of the things that you were observing now. And he's speaking about the movies and about his first encounter with, I guess, the world of visual representation. And I quote, in, in, our, in Hout Bay, our school was used as a cinema on weekends. On Friday nights and sometimes Saturday night, we saw American movies, John Wayne, you name it the black and white films of the 40s and 50s. And then he says, I became the camera when I was sitting in that movie house. And, and this, this struck me. You're saying, I didn't become the characters. I was the observer. Eventually, when I became a photographer, those powers of observing held me in good stead. And in the interview, he goes on to speak about observation, not only of astute observation of the technicalities of, of how to see and how to look, but also of people. And uh, I think your, your observation about his, his eye and the way in which he was able to find the souls inside people um, in the kind of re uh, representation that he, he did with the camera is quite um, interesting to, to think about. Yeah. Um... The, 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 you're, you're reminding me also that, that um, there's, you know, a few days ago, Ingrid, uh, Chekho and I were <clears throat> talking up when we were preparing for, for, for this, uh, this day, we, we, we hit upon a playful notion around uh, uh, a number of C words, you, you know, and, and, and one of, the, one of the, 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 the kind of the naughtiest uh, uh, C words that is used in photography is capture. You know, when you say you, I've captured this image, capture. And if you think about it, you know, you don't have to be, you don't have, you don't need a PhD to, 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 to recognize that that is a dodgy word, you know, capture. And, 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 and uh, we, we, were, we were talking about how in the early colonial days, when, 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 when the camera was first invented and, and when the colonials uh, were photographing people in the, in, in the colonies, you know, the, the, their so-called subjects did not feel at ease. They felt uh, 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 that their souls were, you know, their spirits, yeah, their souls yeah. were being captured, were being, were, were being stolen, you know? And, and so I, I, I rather use the word uh, uh, in, in, in the case of a photographer like George, who was very sensitive and was aware that he, uh, of another C word that he had to, he needed the cooperation of, of, of the people that he was photographing. Because it, it 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 was a dialogue, a communication, yeah. a conversation, conversation, another C word. So uh, 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 George George's photographs were more about the immortalization of you know the the the, the person whose image he was coming to 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 be involved in 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 in, 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 in taking, if you like, you know, in photographing. So yeah, you know, it's a whole different uh, a whole different attitude. You know, Thank you. a whole different yeah. relationship between the photographer and the so-called subject. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Jean. Um, I wonder if this might not be a good moment to invite somebody from the audience or if there are comments. Uh, let me see if there's anything in the chat yet. No. Um, because we have, uh, Lefifi is really having trouble staying connected and um, there are several technical problems. So unfortunately, we are, we've lost him again. And I know that the team is working behind the scenes to get him back online. So if you can bear with us, um, we will, yeah. If there are any, is there anybody in the audience you want to draw into the conversation? Eugene? Um, yes, in fact, thanks for giving me that permission, uh, Valmont. I've been champing at the bit, if you like, because I, uh, I, I, I almost, uh, I was almost kind of uh, uh, slightly cross with myself for having veered into seeing who was in the waiting room because it excited me unduly and, and I had to be, you know, almost sitting on my lips, if you like, to stop myself from too much excitement. But with your permission, I would like maybe to, to invite, if she's still around, uh, uh, you know, 
Lorna de Schmidt, my, my, my beautiful friend who I haven't seen in years, you know, uh, who I was saying right at the beginning uh, was very, very, very close to George as well. So if Lorna is there or, you know, uh, uh, Graham, uh, uh, it, I'd love to invite them to, to, you know, to say a word or two. Lorna or Graham? I see Lorna there, but you may not be able to speak now. Well, let's come back to them. Okay. Um, what about Rashid? Shall we ask Rashid to yeah, speak? Yeah, Rashid as well. Yep. We put him on the spot. <laughs> Okay. Uh, uh, might I just say something else? J just make another bullet point, if you like, about George and 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 and, and photography. Uh, uh, you know, I was saying that earlier. I just hinted at uh, the the one photograph of Piti Gantuli, the sculptor. You know, who who jo George organized, arranged to pose. You know, carrying his his uh, in his. Uh, uh, modified gearbox, you know, uh, because for George, for George Hallett, a photograph often had to make a political statement as an expression of his service to the political cause of freedom. But it has to be noted that this was never at the expense of his highly developed aesthetic sense as an artist devoted to elevating the human spirit. That was, if you like, an even greater a uh, um, uh, uh, motive if, in George taking photographs, the elevation of the human spirit. And as I say, the example of Petiga uh, uh, carrying his heavy me metal sculpture on his shoulders while looking straight ahead to accentuate the arduousness of the struggle for liberation, but at the same time mm. to celebrate the unwavering vision of ultimately uh, attaining freedom, you know? So it was always about that mm. balance for him, it wasn't it, it wasn't a linear, unidimensional yeah. uh, 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 motivation, if you like. It's it's interesting to me also that um, uh, I guess, which is partly drives my interest in this period, is the ways, and it's captured in a, in another quote from that article I was talking about, where he's speaking about his pupilage, if you like, with Richard Reeve. Um, James Matthews, uh, Peter Clark, and so on, where he says, during that period, quote, I was learning, I was with James and Peter and Richard Reeve discussing the writers in New York and elsewhere in a magical world that we created in Silvertown, Cape Town. We were inspired. We had an informal Black Studies group. We also studied literature from other parts of Africa. We were in isolation, but there was this little oasis in Silvertown where we could dip the cup of knowledge into the well of wisdom people who loved language and literature. It was a great period. Uh, it's, um, George is aware of the shoulders that he stands on and the, uh, I guess the, the community in which his own individual brilliance was able to take shape. This idea of, uh, and it's something that I think is um, perhaps something that the artistic world needs to, to, to give leadership on, is this idea that there, there is not a singular um, uh, I guess I'm, th I'm thinking about cultural policy and about the ways in which we think about the arts today, uh, where it's so tied up, as you were saying earlier, with numbers, where this is much more about the education of the human spirit and the soul, this idea that exactly. I'm a photographer, but I'm also critically aware and, and curious about all the arts, about the visual arts, about dance, about performance, and so on. Um, and it's something that's not peculiar to George, but he was a very, very... Uh, I guess it shows in his work, um, the, his, his, his curiosity about this world, this artistic world. Yeah, maybe, maybe George's height also helped him because he towered, you know, over, 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 over the rest of us sometimes. But, uh, but seriously speaking, uh, in a, I'm, I'm agreeing with you in saying that uh, um, George did a lot as well to inspire younger uh, uh, photographers who came after him, like Cedric Nunn, you, you know, uh, mm. Jimmy Matthews as well. And uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, late uh, uh, Peter McKenzie, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, you know, he was he was very uh, to to sharpen their eyes. You know, he he mm. brought that 
to bear quite heavily that, you know, we sharpen our eyes and see more deeply into the human soul because that was his fundamental concern was the spirit, you know, the human soul, you know, the human spirit, mm -hmm. humanity. Mm -hmm. And if you like Ubuntu, you know, yeah, I am because you are. So he was behind the camera lens, but on the other side was an equal spirit with whom he was dancing, you know, in the process of taking the photograph. It was about that, yeah. Did I see Just that the is, is, is around? No? I think we lost him. I haven't lost heard him, yeah. anything new. And... Uh... Just a reminder that you can post a question in the chat, or if you indicate to me, I could let you speak. Um, I could unmute you. So yeah, please feel free to, to post any questions or comments in the chat. And I hope that we will have a chance to catch Lefifi to have him join the conversation um, as soon as possible. Okay, so if you want to unmute yourself, you can. Can one intervene? Hello. Hello, Hello Yankees. Yeah. Please go ahead. I wondered, I want to just um, comment on the fact that the range of George Hallett's work is very complex and quite substantial. And I wonder if you could say something more about that. That's the first question. Um, the second thing is, now that George has passed and his archive has been taken care of by uh, Rashid temporarily, uh, is the university at any point considering supporting restructuring his archive? Ooh. Oof. Is that we, second question for the University of Cape Town? Yes. If there is somebody who can speak on their behalf here. Um, but you, Eugene, you want to answer the first one? I, you, you know what I'm, I'm feeling is, is that um, I, I, I would like, I, I've just sent uh, Lorna uh, a message. And in fact, Gavin, it's lovely to, to hear you and have you around. Uh, uh, I, I'm feeling a little uh, self-conscious and sensitive about hogging the discussion too much. Uh, Lefifi, when we prepared, uh, had a lot of beautiful stories. I'm really hoping that mm -hmm. he can come in so that it's more balanced. But, but Gavin, you know, welcome. We spoke a lot about you as well. And Lefifi remembers you guys very fondly and, the, and your times with, with George. Uh, 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 in your question, maybe are you, might you be, uh, uh, hinting that you'd like to say some things as well, because you know, I would like for you to say something. I'm going to try to unmute Lefifi again, easier yeah. now. Lefifi, can you unmute yourself? Yeah. Oh my God. Welcome. Welcome yeah. and good evening. Oh, yes, yes, yes. It was yeah, okay. I'm late as usual for my own liberation. <laughs> <laughs> but you are here. I don't know how much of the first part of the input you caught. Um, and no, we have just I, been. It was okay. totally silent and things. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, we, I mean, there's no set agenda. We are not following any, any formal format. So um, Eugene has just given, given us a presentation of his, of that, for those photographs that I think you have yeah. seen. And yeah. he's talked us through that. I wonder if we could show that again and maybe have you responding to them. E Eugene has given us some impressions and the readings of the photos, but it would be great to hear, uh, maybe to help you just to think about the, the, some of the things you wanted to share with, the, with everybody today. <laughs> Uh, um, may, I I, just, may I allow me to interrupt, uh, uh, Valmont, just sure. very gently. Okay. I'm, I'm just wondering for, for the balance and the tone and the rhythm of everything, having reached this point, and uh, I'm, 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 I was very inspired by Gavin's uh, 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 two questions, and, and especially yes. in terms of Lefifi and me, the first part. Okay. If, if, if Gavin, if either you or Gavin could repeat that, uh, and, and then okay. before Lefifi goes through, uh, his 
his response to the photos. Maybe that's the, one of the things he could speak to. Okay. You know, Let's start with that. Yeah, that's a great. Yeah, because it's 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 a different it's a it's a new angle. Okay. I'm happy to repeat that unless Gavin wants to rephrase his question or, or repeat it. Uh, I don't know if you can hear, I hope you can hear me. Well, my my yep. question is very simple. I said that the range of George Hallett's work is very complex and substantial. And can you say more about it uh, and mention the things that he's covered in his work? That was my first question. And the second question related to the university yep. possibly yep. supporting his archive. Great. Let's start with that. I mean, if, why don't we give Lefifi a, a chance yeah. to start with that then? Lefifi? Yeah, actually, you know, this uh, Judge Hallett project gives us a clearer picture of the amount of work that lies ahead of us. And Judge Hallett is just another iceberg within our heritage, you know? And every artist of South Africa needs the same amount of attention that we are beginning to give to George Hallett, you get it? And we need, as I said, to turn this people into our cultural icons so that when we start speaking about heritage, our people can begin to understand that the pride of a nation lies with its artists. And the artists are the pen point, you know, of a people's heritage. And we have lost so many of our artists, and I don't want to get into, you know, little squabbles and things like that, that we should work towards a George Hallett pictorial museum. We need to have a Sukoto museum. We desperately need a Gavin Yanji's museum. We need a Pitikantuli museum. And I have been thinking a lot about talking about this big issue about the repatriation, you know, of works that the white man has taken from Africa and all those things. And I think the sculptures that are out in those museums, they are living a very comfortable life. I think we need to first harness the works that are here now, you know? I mean, we don't have any museum of even NS Cole, you know, or Peter Magubani. And we have Maurice Lehuave, we have Victor Matom, we have hundreds of photographers. And I think we need to strategize and divide this labor force that we have this George Hallett group now. We need to have a James Matthews group, you know? And let us begin to address issues of heritage so that when we say we have a heritage month, we should actually have concrete references. I'm just laying a foundation there. Do you want to give give us any sense of what it was about George Hallett that excited you? About what about his artistry that moved you? That you think uh, deserves recognition? You, you know, George Hallett is actually one of the guys photographers who actually captured the importance of the artists as a whole, you know? He, he, he wasn't just concerned with, you know, the everyday photography of people chopping each other with axes and things like that. But he con documented writers 
And as I said, he is worthy of making an African Writers Museum. He has documented music, musicians. He can make a musician's library, a musician's muse museum, you know? And even some of the uh, painters, you know, he has covered Everybody, the Louis Marc Covellas, the Dumile Fenis, the Secotos, and things like that, which becomes important that his photographs can become very important, you know, in terms of our arts academies. You get it? So that the young artists, when they move in the corridors, can see the photos that George took of the painters. If there are any people who are involved with dancing and things like that, Amakawe and et cetera, Ipindombi. Yes, all these dancers, yes, photographs of all these things. So this is a, a, a photographer, a doyen of arts and artist documentation. I think for me, that is the most powerful part of George Hallett oh, as a yeah. photographer. And I have this as an artist that he actually has managed to document artists and especially even before, you know, the early pictures in South Africa and all these exile artists. I mean, he has incredible photographs of, of Dumile, of, Everybody, I mean, that really kind of matters in our struggle, you know, and it's absolutely important that he has to be introduced, you know, to the heritage canon of South Africa, you know, I mean, yeah. It would be very important that we have a lot of capable sculptors. Let's, yeah. let's have even placards that John Hallett lived in this house. And if we were really, really on it, all the houses has been living in Algeria, in Paris, in London, in all these things. Like we were talking about where Van Gogh lived in London. There is a placard that he lived in this house and things like that. And mm -hmm. as a heritage of our own people here, there's no placard where Miriam Dadi lived or Oswald Mjali or even James Matthews, you know, or George Hallett himself, you know. Mm. So we need to, to uh, okay, sorry. Yeah. No, 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 that's good. I, I just wanted to remind us to speak about the global nature of that because um, we, you know, the photo, the, some of the photos that Eugene showed us speaks about a time in exile and then there's a time in South Africa and there's before and after. But um, one of the things you were mentioning in the, in the chat we had before was about the life and the kind of community life of people in exile. I mean, there were some amazing stories about Eugene's home, for example, and how things used to circulate there. Um, but I, I also want to just before we before we lose the thread, um, invite Nomusa Makubu to just say a few words about the intentions and the plans of, of UCT's uh, Works of Art Committee. Nomusa, are you able to speak? Thanks, thanks so much. Um, I, I, Eugene, you're so right. I mean, you know, just stepping into this room, I'm getting goosebumps because, you know, of the kind of company that we have. Uh, and it's such a, such a good feeling. Um, but a lot of very important points that I think uh, that Delifik has already raised um, in terms of how we can begin to think about preserving um, the, the heritage that we have. Um, Gavin, so I wanted to address this question about um, that happening within the university. 
on one hand, of course, it is important. And I think for us as the Works of Art Committee, this was the first step towards that and to say, you know what, we, you know, this, this work, even though we can't show it in its entirety, we have to see it like this. We, we, you know, we have to be able to, to, to have it shown publicly again and again. I mean, when you think about um, uh, uh, George Hallett's photographs, there are some photographs that are so memorable, you recognize them anywhere. It, it, unmistakable. It's just, they they you know, are part of our lexicon. Now, you know. I. <laughs> but there are others that people simply just don't know or haven't seen. Mm. And I think there's, you know, there's a particular kind of um, repertoire that we have to also begin to 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 show. Um, so mm. it, a part of the question, um, Gavin, or well, part of the answer to the question is that, of course, universities are very strange institutions. On one hand, of course, they have the resources for that preservation, but one also wor worries about the easy access to what is preserved in those institutions. And so I think, yeah, part of that question, part of me says, yes, of course, you know, we, the, as, as a university, it's very important that we, 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 we collect, collate, and bring in and, and try and breathe as much life as possible, you know, into the archives and particularly photographers in South Africa like George Hallett. Um, but also at the same time, the question is about how do we shift beyond these, these, uh, what, you know, what, the, this, this, these invisible boundaries that institutions like universities and particularly one like ECT often put up in terms of easy access, right? So, so I mean, it's, it's one of those two things, but yeah, absolutely, absolutely. This is for us a first step towards that. And, and of course, towards making this, um, what's making this work part of a, a visual vocabulary that's, that's always already available and, um, you know, recreating and reshaping the conversations like this. But thanks, thank you so much for that question. <laughs> Thank you, Nalusa. Bel Belmont, with, yes. with your permission, may, may I just uh, positively interrupt and, uh, and, and, <clears throat> and just give us, come back to uh, 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 Gavin's very beautiful provocation. And I, 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 um, I still feel that uh, uh, I, I want to invite us to kind of have this image of a uh, a festival of the fruits, you know, festival of the first fruits. This is the first time we are gathering like this about, you know, a very legendary person and, 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 and a legendary story. And since we have this community created, you know, uh, uh, through you, in Ingrid, Chekho and others, we, uh, how about we 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 use the image that you were just reminding us of when when Lefifi had just spoken of of how, for example, at my home, but mine wasn't the only home, but that's what you mentioned. We would all gather, and there'd be eating and discoursing and comforting and consoling and healing and all of that and music. Mm. Now I said already that I spotted several names in 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 in, in amongst the participants who were part of that very uh, 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 life, that very living, that very lifestyle that George was central to. So I'm asking humbly again, I would like to, 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 go, to go via Gavin's question and invite Gavin himself, as well as I've, I've, I've indicated to Lorna as well privately, just to bring some of those people in to, 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 to actually animate this energy, you, you know, to be true to it. And for me, that's, uh, that would be the planting of a seed of the next season's harvest, you know, if you like. The future that Lefif is talking about, you know, the can archives, I, the museums and all of that, yeah. Can I intervene? Because I have to unfortunately run to, to another meeting uh, as this information about this talk came to me very late. Um, but I've posted a second question because I think before we talk about museums uh, or anything like that, I think we need to do the research. In other words, the institutions, our universities and our colleges need to step up and promote this research of our own heritage. That's the first thing that needs to be done because you don't build a museum, 
because Lafifi says, let's do one. You build a museum because there is a vast amount of information that needs to be archived. That's the way you build a museum. So I think the research needs to be done and the universities, et cetera, should step up and people who are funding research should look at that heritage funding that is required to do that. That's what's missing. Uh, so that's a very, very important point that I think needs to be looked at. And it, re it re as Lafifi said, it uh, relates to not only George, there are many, many hundreds of other artists. There's an archive of our artists. Uh, my history book on uh, visual century reveals all of that. You can go and look at them. You can see who they are. Uh, it's the first real take on our, on our heritage in, in the visual arts. I, 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 I should recommend to you that this book is going to be put possibly for free online by Wits University in the coming year. So the entire four volumes will be available for everybody to research. So there's a, there's a beginning and that is an invitation to all young research and to all young students who are looking to find a, 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 a profession in the, in the visual arts. The research is one of the big gaps where we, we need to fill not just with information, but with people. Who, who become professionals in their field and know the field and can actually write about it, can visualize it, can extend it, can, can disseminate it. This is what is required. When we've got that body mm. together, we can begin to talk about building proper archives and proper museum institutions. But until that, we're having chat lines on Zoom. That's what we're doing, nothing else. So maybe unfortunately, bit, I have to run because I have another meeting, but that was my recommendation. Thanks, to, Kevin, and thanks for your input. And Thank I'm, you very I, much. And I'm uh, you know, very, very pleased that this has begun and maybe we can continue. So the best of luck to all of you from now on. Okay, bye. Sure, thanks. It may be a good moment for me to step in very quickly. I'm, uh, I'm, not, I'm not gonna speak about it too much, but there is in fact, um, uh, there's this uh, amazing initiative by the Works of Art Committee. There's a big archival development initiative going on at UWC that's been happening for a number of years now. Um, and uh, Gavin did mention um, that Rashid Lombard has, is, is involved in that. Um, I'm not going to speak about that now, but it's just a, a direct response to say that research and archiving go together by extension. So we need to access and we need to find where the archival practices are happening, where these um, gems are being consolidated uh, in order for researchers to get there for for, for to journalists and, and all kinds of other people who may have an interest in it. So, I, I, I mean, I just want to respond that that is definitely something that um, is critically important in, in an enterprise like this. And it, in a sense, it's the vision behind um, the vision behind what Lefifi is, is calling for is a general ferment of activity that could build, um, that could um, enhance, this, let these stories circulate around the country and around the world in ways that they have not up to now. There are a couple of comments in the chat that I want to pick up on. Um, Aubrey Mohasi says, in all honesty, we are lagging behind. We have such a rich heritage and yet we still talk with no action. How long has Ernest Cole been gone? Yet even today people know People from his hometown of Mamul Nodi don't know him. Um, there's a sense of urgency, of course, also with, we all go through our life cycles and we get older and then, um, you know, those transitions into the next world uh, mean that we also lose memory and we lose heritage. So there's, there's this constant um, attrition that we are involved in, how to preserve, how to circulate these stories and new for new, for young people, especially. Le Fifi? Yeah, I'm around. Do you have any uh, responses or comments at this stage? You know, the thing is, there's a lot of material, but where do, do we have a hub? Are these universities the hub for information that I have this archive and I want to contribute it to this center where they are making. And the other real pro problematic is, is that, uh, you know, it's, I give you very simple examples. 
uh, uh, Dave Marks, you know, has been a guy that was collecting music in the 70s and, you know, at festivals, recording mm. everything. He built an incredible, you know, collection. Yes. Uh, historic material, you know. And Dave Marks stayed in South Africa here. And there's a lot of these other people, you know, who have lots of material. Mm. This Death and Dawn, the, uh, what's its name? You know, the, the, the Jewish cats that were responsible for taking... Lundberg. A, yeah, and Bernard. all the, the, the Bernard, yeah, Ian, Ian Bernard and all these people. And they have, I mean, an incredible archive on South mm -hmm. African, especially theater, you know. This King Kong, Sponono, you know, and all this material, we have to 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 see where 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 is it going to be held, you know? And I know there's this other group called uh, Ifaletu that were collecting wax, you know, from uh, diplomats, you know, who in the 70s they used to buy our wax for like 250 rands and things like that. And Brad Jeff actually told them that. The day South Africa is free, you have to bring the wax back. And some of the honest diplomats brought the wax back, but they were collected by Ifa Lit. And I don't even want to get into this huge exhibition that was called Artist Against Apartheid, you know? And those wax don't even belong to South Africa, but they were the Swedish people here said that they are giving the works to the ANC, you know? And in the ANC, who is responsible and accountable for all those paintings, you know? International Artists Against Apartheid and it's big names there when, if you look at the, the catalog. And mm. where are the works, who's, as Bragavin was explaining that we need to have people to research. And I'm so disgusted a little bit with, with these universities, you know, because they are the ones that were banning works of art and things like that, you know? And- The Fifi? Sorry, okay. carry on, finish your Let point. Me, no, 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 finish your point. Yeah. That, you know, in the seventies, what we used to do is, we used to go to universities making exhibitions, educating the students about artists, you know, and having small exhibitions. And I remember even at Tevlyov when you used to have exhibitions of works of Sir Ike Nguana, Johnny Rubero, and all this thing. And surprise, surprise, the works were like woodcut A4, one rand 75 cents and nobody bought those works. So today we need to go back to those so-called conscientization programs so that even in our art schools, actually these art schools are teaching people a lot of wrong things because artists first year must be taught as to what the hell is this thing called art? Why is it so important? Before they even start painting or writing or taking photographs and things like that. You know, I'm sorry, okay. <laughs> Thanks, Lafifi. <laughs> I wanted to jump to a, a couple of comments. Um, mm. Arun Gunsali says, I'd like to challenge that actually George Hallett's work could be shown in its entirety. Not only does he deserve a proper retrospective locally, but it should travel to London, Paris, where his work 
where his life and work touch and possibly other places. Um, I know we know he spent some time teaching in the US as well. Um, Arian Kakanov, and there are a couple of luminaries in the room who are doing amazing archival work, um, says Dave Marks' his entire archive is now housed, uh, Lefifi, in Stellenbosch. Yes, it's called I the know. Hidden Years. Yes. Okay, you're aware of that. But in case anybody yep. else didn't, um, there is uh, work being done now on his collection. And Yum Dladlose says, for the reason that our research is so limited or takes us so far, it becomes a problem for us even to understand how we take further the works our masters have created through our contribution to make a contribution to the art form. Yeah. From my humble little corner, yes. I, I'm sensing that, um, you know, this is a good start like uh, Gavin, before he had to flee, said, you know, it's, it's a laying of a foundation that has to be regarded with the seriousness of the purpose that it has behind it. Because all these comments by people who I happen to know as well, I'm aware, like the Fifi is aware of what Arian, uh, Arian Kaganov is, is, is speaking of, and that's beautiful. And, and the comment that Hugh was making, you know, and, and, and that Ingrid uh, made a little earlier as well, about taking, uh, being serious about developing and supporting and caring for archival resources. All of that points to the fact that we are consolidating a worthy foundation. And what needs to be done is to, for us to make sure that we don't, uh, uh, we don't lose sight and, and drop the ball when it comes to actually building on the foundation and going forward, you know, yeah. Thank you, Eugene. Did I get a sense that Graham Goddard wanted to speak? Graham, did you want to say something? Let me read uh, a quote from Ingrid Masondo. We have to be serious about developing, supporting, and caring for archival resources. We have photographers who are also archivists in this platform, such as Graham Goddard. Otherwise, I'm going to read another quote. Okay. I'm just trying to find it. Okay, well, we'll carry on. If I do find it, I'll, I'll share it with you. And it speaks about the 1970s. I, I guess I wanted to come back to Lefifi and Eugene speaking about 1970s and the kind of atmosphere of black consciousness. We forget, we can take many things for granted now because there were these struggles. And uh, in a sense, our new younger generations have been going back to the thinking of, of Steve Biko, um, Franz Fanon and other anti-colonial intellectuals. It has been a time of real um, reflection and hunger for, for intellectual guidance and intellectual enrichment in a sense um i want to and i can't find the quote but george yeah. was basically uh, expressing in his own words his sense of of what blackness meant and how he had to constantly negotiate that and he, he took I, I mean from what i'm reading what? he took it almost directly out of the kind of the period of black consciousness in 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 south africa and how it traveled uh, through through the exile community well, Lorna, I, I, did you I, want to speak oh Sorry. <laughs> Lona, welcome. Uh, oh, yes, yes. Look, uh, listening to what everybody has to say here, I can, I suppose, expand on what had been said. But let me start off by saying I agree with most everything that had been said here. So I won't comment about, around everything, but the research that you speak about, what I've heard here is a huge amount of hyperbole about how wonderful George Hallett was. I'd be the first one to stand on the top of a mountain and shout out how good he was. But we have to remember that the artists now, now no longer with us and those who are aging 
that we have to research their lives within a, a, a period in which they live. And in the case of the artists mentioned, all of us lived through the apartheid years. Now, if I bring it back to George, George, as I said, was a wonderful photographer, one of the best in the world. But we must not be afraid of speaking also about that, which they had difficulty with, because that was a part of the lives in which we live. Mm -hmm. right? The complexity of, of yeah. the human being. Of course. And George, like all of us, could have right, two contradictory, more than two, several contradictory ideas in his head. George could also be, let me just say, obnoxious, especially after a few drinks. George was tall, and in my tiny kitchen, I very often felt crutched. <laughs> George was persuasive, but mm. he could also bully you into doing something. And I will give you an example. George had to do the cover for a book whose title I forget, and the writer I forget but it was one of the African writer series. And the model he had, because the book was about life, but mainly about death. He needed someone to wrap up in a sheet right, and look like what the deceased would look like. And George had it in his head that the model was going to be there on the floor, right? Uh, wrapped in the shroud with a great big bloody snake on her chest. And the model refused to turn up. And with his last pennies, he went <laughs> to uh, the British Museum um, and someone kindly <laughs> under the counter lent him the stuffed snake. <laughs> he then put pennies on my eyes because I landed up doing that and George bullied me into it. <laughs> Okay, so what I'm saying, you know, is we have to be truthful about the, our artists, mm. about Dumela and how he died, about Sokoto, who, God be praised, right, at least didn't starve to death. But life was not easy for him. And it's people like Shambani Mangani, right, who could dig around. So the researchers, right? I mean, the history of art, right? And what do they tell us how wonderful these artists were, right? Hmm. Picasso was fantastic, but he wasn't always wonderful. So that's what I'm saying. The good must go with the bad, mm -hmm. right? And that's not to say you, you <laughs> kick a dead man twice. Once is enough. That's it then. Hey, Lorna, thank you. Oh, my beautiful sister. I miss you. Thank you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not to worry. You can do this for me one day when I'm dead. Love you, my sister. Love you. Thank you. You've just made my day by, by saying, you know, giving us your a slice of your wisdom. Thank you. Your relations. Okay.
now speaking to you all. Thanks, Lorna. Um, yeah, I think your your point about complexity and about the because otherwise we are, especially in intergenerational conversations, um, we can't get away with the old tropes in a sense. We need to sp speak honestly and truthfully about who we are. And I think there's a lot of powerful inspiration in who we are, but there's also things that we need to learn and, and reflect on. And that's what art, I imagine, why all of us are interested in art, because it allows us to encounter complexity and to to find ways to work with it uh, the world is not a simple place it's a difficult and and cruel place does anybody else feel like speaking or perhaps i can ask lefifi and eugene to sp to speak a little bit about uh, some of those yeah some of the atmosphere of the time that you you encountered George outside of the country as well as inside. Um, yeah, the, the work you've done in your own respective capacities as uh, working with Black consciousness and with, with cultural movements um, in different places that you were telling me about the other day that I found so incredibly inspiring. I, I, I would like to add uh, <clears throat> very briefly that um, even now, in my advanced age, I am connected with uh, young people, especially all ages, but uh, very much uh, y much younger people in South Africa who are reaching out to me because they identify me as somebody, you know, from that time with Steve Biko, with Lorna, in fact, who has just spoken to us. And, and, and uh, I remember that uh, a few months ago, I was on a Zoom uh, uh, event with Sats Cooper and Sam Moodley, both of whom are from that era as well, the Steve Biko led Black Consciousness Movement. And uh, we were telling stories about how, for instance, and I was physically personally involved. I was the driver and, and one of the builders on the project of building a school, for instance. I was involved in more than one of those uh, 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 initiatives, but we were very much in the community. We were with the people, you know, at this, that hackneyed, uh, you, I'm remembering the hackneyed term, grassroots, you, you know, we're mm -hmm. literally in the community with the people, you know. So when we said the people, we were with the people and we were part of the people. So there was not, there was not a, a, a wide rift between us in the so-called movement who felt we were, you know, the, the, the leaders, you, you know, of, of, of the movement. There was not a distance, there was not a cleavage, not a gap mm. between mm. us and what we can refer to as the people because we were in the community actively involved doing what we were doing. So for me, I, I, uh, when I was hearing Gavin talk about uh, uh, the universities, you know, getting involved, and 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 we're talking about researchers, etc. You know, uh, I I wish for I, I'm sensing that young people are wanting some of that. You know, they, they they want to be able to smell the movement, the activism. They want to be they want to be able to sense it, to see it. You know, for it to be a part of their vibration rather than something that is only online. Or, 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 you know, exactly. or in a book, or in fact, or at a university, with all due respect, you, you know, to people at universities, because, you know, a lot of us were there as well. Like, like I work, for instance, with a, a woman called uh, Dr. June Bam Hutchinson at, at UCT, mm. and, and she's involved in making the presence of, 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 of uh, Khoisan people felt for real so, so that there, mm. there's no again no gap no no bridge mm. that has to be built that has to be navigated in a wobbly way between the community and these institutions that it all be one and the place to start is in the community itself where we worked mm. with the likes of Lorna mm. you know you know uh, uh, Sats, Strini, you know Sam, Steve you know etc yeah. Mm. That's a very powerful call for all of us and for, I guess, universities particularly to 
find ways to engage meaningfully and um, powerfully with with communities in in different. But, I mean, I, I guess the, the debate about um, restitution and decolonization is also a debate for for the local context, and uh, those kinds of questions need to be need to be addressed. Lefifi, please. Go for no, it. I mean, you know, all these things can be solved a little bit by integrating the artists into these so-called academies, you know? And I know a lot of incredible artists and I can give you like say Isaac Nguana, great artist, but this kind of artist don't even need to lecture at these universities. They just need to be there. So they need to do the their students thing. can experience being around an artist and they mm -hmm. can see the dedication and commitment, you know, that this cat is not actually doing it for the money or for anything, but he has a total national commitment, you, you, you see. And most of the students, they, they, have, they don't have, have hardly met an artist and they're doing these fantastic researches and things like that. And I was even talking on another level that, you know, there's a, this big myth in South Africa that South Africa has a, a middle class and all this kind of stupidity and things like that, you know. But South Africa doesn't have a middle class. It's a, a, a bunch of people with some little money, you, you, you get it. Because middle class is a static consciousness. It's not determined by the amount of money you owe the bank and things like that. Absolutely. Powerful. And it's absolutely very important to know that you can never be a middle class if you don't have an artist as your personal friend. These are my standards that I'm setting. You know, very, very, very important, you know. So let us integrate the artists into these academies, you know, so that at least people can have an idea what the hell are these people, you know? That's a very uh, powerful um, call. Uh, thank you, Lefifi, for mm. a different kind of public dispensation around the arts. I think that's what we are, uh, that's what the conversation seems to be demanding of all the kind of role players and stakeholders, uh, um, all of us in our different locations um, in, this, in this forum today. Eugene. Y yeah, because uh, actually I'm so, I'm so the excited. pride of a nation lies with oh. its artist. So, sorry. Okay. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, uh, no apologies, uh, Lefifi, for butting in, but Valmont, uh, I, I want to apologize for butting in, but also explain that I couldn't help it because my, my belly is, is vibrating. I'm so excited. You know, I'm palpitating. My, you, you know, I'm excited because if you look at the comments, just off, uh, around the time I said what I said, uh, Tabo responds, mm. you, you'll see there in the comments. I saw that, and he's yes. one of the young people in South Africa. Thank who, you, Tabu. Who, you know, I, who admires you so much. Uh, the other day I was talking to Brian Abe Thindi about your first poetry encounter in Durban. So, so that, he has a testament, if you like, to, to you know, testimony of, of the fact of what I'm explaining about the, the importance of being in the community and, 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 and bridging that gap, you know, narrowing, you know, putty filling the gap with real activism between, you know, you know these these uh, tertiary institutions and 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 and, and the community, you know, uh, 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 just a quick comment. The, 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 mm. Someone's asking what Abigindi's role in was in those years, and of course, Tabo uh, answers again. Abigindi is is the co-founder with Philip Tabane of Malombo, the the, the, the jazz men, oh. you know, the, the famous oh. group. Around mm. the time in the 70s, around the time of, of, of Biko and the rest of us, we, we, we used to have 
get-togethers. You, you know, there's something we call Goomba, Goomba sessions, Goomba Goomba mm -hmm. within the movement, you know. And mm -hmm. those were parties where w there was music and there was art, there was poetry, was art, and there was, was conscientization, yeah. there was everything, mm -hmm. there was life mm -hmm. in that oh. holistic African sense where you didn't compartmentalize the different forms mm -hmm. of expression, you know. That and so happen. everything happened there. So I'm uh, uh, with A.B. Gundi, he was part of that as well. You know, we used to go to Mamelodi and various places. With Lefifi, in fact, we used to drive. I was reminding you guys the other day, going in the Beatle, there was Dashiki, the Malo poets, mm. you know. So mm. that activism was not something that you spoke about, you know, third hand. It was a lived situation. And, and our time now is calling for that, you know. It's amazing because uh, the description that I read earlier of George's milieu, the kind of the world that he grew up in, and then the people who influenced him, is being reproduced all over South Africa in that time. Uh, I guess lots of young people are encountering the arts uh, in this way, in in their own sort of figuration of it, uh, beyond what the universities or what kind of um, the neo-colonial institutions were trying to to impose. Uh, so it is a story that I think has got a, a lot of powerful relevance for how we are and kind of the place that we've arrived at uh, as, as a, I guess, a global community and South Africans. I think I'm going to start winding down our conversation. Um, I'm not sure, again, as a final invitation to anybody in the broader participation participants who want to make a comment. Um, Please feel free, and uh, the moment is now. If if there isn't, I'm going to perhaps ask Lefifi and Eugene just to have a last word, and um, then we can carry on with our evenings and see. I if would just do like want to, to keep Lorna. Yeah, yes. I, yeah, I would just like to make an observation here, and I won't <laughs> labor the point, but nothing has been mentioned about schools. And I cannot see why it is not possible for artists and others interested in the arts to actually hammer down the doors right, of the education departments on a provincial level and say, we have a group of people who are prepared to come in on a Saturday morning or Friday afternoons or whatever. We will find the money, but you also put in money, right? Because if any training, any uh, awareness is going to be built purely for academic institutions, we're never going to get to our kids, right? And that is where right? The work starts because you know and I know that when the going gets rough, it's in the arts where we keep the home fires burning. So that is the only comment I can make before I become a pain in the butt. Oh, never. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lorna. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Lana. Tabu Rapu said, uh, Drumbeat Restaurant used to be owned by Lefifi Tladi's parents, uh, where he also, where Lefifi taught me how to play Scrabble. There you go. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. Lefifi, Eugene, do you want to give us any parting thoughts, uh, coming back to, circling back to George Hallett and to your own inspirations. Um, and then I think we are going to say thank you to everybody and call it a day. You want to go, Lefifi? No, you, you can take it. My comments are just very succinct, you know, and we have a lot of work to do, you know, and let us get people who are serious and understand the task, you know, because it, 
this is more than wishing, you know. And uh, I, I want to remind Sis Lona about the photographs she sent to me. I think it was taken by Graham, who is also a very great documenter of Uncle Gerald at their place and seated next to a letter I had written to Uncle Gerald, who, which was, he was very, very proud of that letter. And he even sent me one drawing of his. So at least I have a Sekoto. Okay. Wow. Wow. Thank you, Lafifi. Mm. Eugene? Yeah, uh, um, I, I, I thank you, Valmont, for giving me the platform to say my last word. <clears throat> and like Lefifi, I, uh, I want to bring it uh, back round to Lorna, you know, and I'm glad that Lorna uh, 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 popped in a couple of times to give us, you, you know, the benefit of her wisdom. Because uh, for me, my memory, you know, some of my best memories of I I in exile, of of, uh, of 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 keeping afloat the buoyancy of my experience of exile. Some of my greatest moments were with Lorna and Graham, either at my place or their place, or at a venue where we are experiencing, you know, Abdullah Ibrahim or, or McCoy Taina, you, you know. Uh, and at one stage, Maya Angelou as well. Um, so I bring it back to Lorna in that L Lorna's final point about uh, uh, hammering down the doors of the education department and, and relating to schools. Because for me, that was the greatest experience of being in the black consciousness movement and, and, and going into exile and then having this vision of going back through the conduit of George's lens, mm. as it is what brought us together this evening. I would like to say that I look forward to a time before I shrivel completely and disappear, when I will be back in my country, our country, and, and witnessing and participating in the uh, manifestation of that kind of vision of education through the arts like we were involved in during the black consciousness movement and it's needed now more than ever before mm. Mm. so in that i would like to personally thank you valmont and our two sisters ingrid and Chekho, for making it uh, possible for, for for creating this platform inviting us into the conversation and through me extending to Lefifi Tladi. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you, Eugene. I, I think to close this thing officially, I'll read you a poem. And the poem reads like, uh, minds kept in custody, detached, despairing, disillusioned, decaying, degenerating, emotions held together with paper clips, making your causes my causes, and the great pretender creating problems and pretending to seek solutions to the same problems, and life's cupboard puzzle the sameness, inextricably interwoven with the smell of dampness and old rags, man strangling on his own ignorance, Overworked, overused, worn out, phony phrases, treacherous parasites, soul and bellies fed from feasting on concert, motivation, perspectives of others, all dealing in the deadly double cross, the annihilators, the inducers, the seducers, different approaches, different methods, same soup warmed all over. And you sit on a throne of human decency, masturbating to the sound of their agonized cries. Trust us, trust me, deal us yes, deal us no, deal us all in the destruction of human souls. Thank you. Thank you, Lefifi. Wow. Yeah. But but Valmont, mm -hmm. you wouldn't be the beautiful Valmont if you don't permit me to close with a poem that I wrote for George. 
please. Much shorter than the fifties. <laughs> the poem is called Starlight. And I shared it around, it was written on the 2nd of uh, June, 2020. For George Hallett, South African photographer. When a tree falls, the whole forest knows. When the sky bleeds, the song of the river flows. Darkness does not come with the passing of light. Only more light is revealed in the deepest secret of night. Once there was a man whose eye could see above and beyond the horizon that brought unshuttered love. A star now guides us to the peace that welcomes his arrival and blesses him with a life that is eternally beyond survival. Thank you. Wow, thank you, Eugene. And thank Great. you everybody um, for a exhilarating conversation. You both have been so inspiring to me and um, yeah, we, we go where I had a, a much bigger taste of your, of your, um, of the inspiration the other day was a sample of it. Um, yeah, this is the beginning of a conversation and I really want to leave us with a, with a thought that we are being challenged by Lefifi and Eugene uh, by way of honoring people like George um, and their own example to build a kind of to expand and to build and to multiply this, the audiences and the people who can participate in what we should think of as a kind of a broader movement to make sure that our, our, our memory as a people, a part of a bigger world is, is intact. And uh, that kind of archival activism, artistic activism, I think is, is the power, is, is the kind of inspiration that I get from, from both your examples and from George's a sense that there's something bigger than all of us that we're trying to to build here and it needs to involve human creativity at the center of it. Uh, so thank you for that inspiration. Thank you to our wonderful team working behind the scenes um, at the, uh, the works of art committee, Nomusa, Ingrid, um, Chekho, Buntu on the sort of man staffing all the technical things. Thank you so much everybody. And uh, we look forward to having many, many more of these. Good night. Thank you to Eugene and to Lefifi for, for being here and for your energy and, and example. Good night, everybody. Good night, Lorna. And thank Lorna. you very much. Thank you, Lorna. Okay.